Hey guys, so I just want to talk about the coronavirus and how frustrated I am about it. <sighs> okay, so I'm very frustrated because it just seems like people are not under... Maybe I'm not understanding something. Maybe that's why I don't get what's going on. But it also seems like other people are not understanding and they only want to focus on the negative sort of thing that's going on. And I think the biggest problem with that is that even the negative is not as bad as people are trying to make it out to be. So let me give you an example. Let me put this over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So it says it only took a few days for the Wisconsin patient to get over the fever and a cough and feel well enough to get out of bed and back to normal life. Shop for groceries, hang out in a coffee shop, maybe see a new movie. That wasn't an option because they were getting over the coronavirus, right? So they told her to stay home. It says, for most people, this will be the course. It'll be like a cold, Dr. Nasia Safdar, the patient's physician, told NBC News. So far, at least 15 people with confirmed infections in the United States are said to have made full recoveries. In addition to the Wisconsin patients, six people in California, four people in Nebraska, two people in Illinois, one in Arizona, and one in Washington are better. We're, we're not dying from this. We're not even getting all that much hurt from this. All right, I think I saw one article that said 20 to 30% of the people who have severe cases, and usually only the elderly are getting severe cases, so that means out of 100, at most three, are going to have permanent, not even permanent lung damage, it's, it's semi-permanent lung damage, and they can do things to increase the capacity of their lungs and get their lung capacity back. So it doesn't have permanent damage so far. There's nothing <clears throat> that says you're going to die from it. I just saw another, let me see if I can find this. Yes, there it is. Okay. I just saw another article where two 100 year olds, after getting some treatment in a hospital, survived it. So people are not dying. People are already getting over this thing already. So let me show you. Let me show you. Okay, here we go. Let me scroll back up. A 103 year old woman has become the oldest person to be coronavirus and return home. So that means she didn't die. She's fine. Zane Gufan recovered from the disease after receiving treatment for just six days at a hospital in Wuhan, a Chinese city at the center of the outbreak. I'm sorry if I said her name wrong. I'm trying. These are not easy names for me. The centenarian's quick recovery was down to her having no underlying health conditions apart from mild chronic bronchitis, said her doctor, Zhang Yulan. Okay, so she was diagnosed at this hospital. And then we scroll down. She was escorted out, etc. A 100-year-old man with Alzheimer's disease, hypertension, and heart failure also recovered from the virus in Wuhan this week after being treated by military doctors. The disease has infected more than 80,700 people in China and killed 3,000. So let's do some math real quick. And I admit I'm not great at math, but I can just do this on a calculator, right? So, so, so. We have, no, where's that? Okay, 80,700. So 3,000, thousand, divided by 80,700 to give us a percentage. That is 3%. And that number is holding at 3% who die from it. Now, I'm not saying that that's a happy thing. But what I am saying is as far as anybody knows or understands or as far as anything that is going on, this is one of the lowest death rates or counts of any disease. And yet everything out there, including our... <laughs> and, okay, and the other point about that is that this is where they did not quarantine people for at least two to three months, okay? You have Italy as a point that people bring up. Well, they're all dying. They're not all dying. Even if you look at that number, I think it said it was 8%. They have an increase. They have a more increased amount because they have a higher amount of elderly with them who are 
who have you know other underlying diseases that could do that don't don't help the matter when it's flu season italy has a bunch of deaths too but you don't hear about that because it's not as sensational as this is so it just drives me crazy there the media is out there just and including like our government the media and the government are out here making people think they're gonna die everything's gonna go rotten we have to quarantine each other so that we don't you know so there's not like a run on the hospitals i don't even believe that that would be the case all of these people that have been able to recover from it didn't go to the hospital they went to like their their local doctor their gp and went home and recovered of it their bodies were able to fight it off i just don't under i just hmm. i don't like it when governments and media try to make us all just freak out and this is exactly what people have done they freaked out i do understand that there's an element of the unknown here okay but just like with any other new flu strain any other new cold strain there's always an element of unknown and we don't shut things down for that this is a new strain of a coronavirus which we all get we all get the coronavirus during the year a certain strain this is just a new one that hopped apparently from animals to us okay and i hate that it's making us freak out i hate it i hate that they the media and the government have made it mandatory for us to just stay trapped where we are instead of like letting us go to hospitals and things like that instead i don't i don't know i just think that if you if we did what we normally did it probably would be fine as well I understand that everybody's saying, no, we have to quarantine. I'm just trying to point out some inconsistencies that I see. It's been here for two months already. I can guarantee you that because December 2019 is when we actually noticed that it was a thing. So you have to, you have to think it was a thing before then. We just didn't notice it. So it's, it's at least been three to four months. That it's been going around and not killing people. I just... I don't think anybody's thinking. Everybody's freaking out instead, including governments, because governments don't want to get in trouble when people start dying and people are start saying, well, you didn't do anything for us. And I understand the catch-22 that they're about. But I also think, you know, common sense. Common sense says if this thing's been around since 2019 and we're just noticing it's killing people, that means it's been around and not killing people for at least two to three months, which includes older people. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't know. To me, that's just common sense. You just, you have to think and not react. I understand the unknown about it. Okay. We don't know everything. It's new, etc. But every year we get new flu viruses. We get new cold strains and we don't do this. So what really is the point to making us do all of this? I just don't know. So here's another one. This is where they're talking about, oh, sorry, let me switch it over. Okay. So this is where they're talking about some people who recover from the coronavirus might be left with 20 to 30 percent less lung function okay and it's only people who have severe cases of this let me get find where they said that so they found a drop of 20 to 30 percent in lung capacity in two or three of them but you can do cardiovascular exercises to improve your lungs, which means you can get your 20 to 30 percent back. I just don't understand. Everything, everything about this doesn't say to me, stay in your homes, freak out, you know, and all this. It says scans of nine patients in groups suggest that recovered patients has sustained organ damage. But they won't tell us, they don't tell us like what kind other than the lungs, which you can get back. So come on. There's a global total of 128 infections and 70,000 have recovered and more than 4,700 have died. So let's just use these numbers again. 4,700 divided by 128,000, right? So again, I'm doing a percentage here. Again, that's 3%. Even if you round up, because I'm consistently getting 0.036, so you could say 4%. That it is staying steady. It is steady at that number on all of these numbers that we've found so far. 
it says it affects elderly and those with pre-existing symptoms the most, right? So this is just talking about weakened lung capacity, but then again, like they said, you can do exercises and get that back. So out of 12 people in the group that they studied about the lungs, two to three saw changes in their lung capacity. So let's look at that. Let's say three, the max, divided by 12. That's 25%. That's a quarter. So of the small amount that have the damage, a fourth of them, so two, might have lung damage. Guess what? I have asthma. How do I explain this? I have asthma. Anytime I get a cold, anytime I have anything, I have lung damage. Okay, because with asthma, basically what asthma very simplistically is, is your lungs cannot process out the fluid that you breathe in. So when you breathe in, there's fluid in your air. There's, there's water, small, you know, that's what humidity is. So all air, especially here in the South, <laughs> has water in it. And one of the things, one of the many things that your lungs do is process that water out so that you're not breathing, so that you can take the, <clears throat> sorry, so that you can take basically the air out of the, out of the water. I can't think of the, it's H2O is water, but oxygen is O2. Okay. So you can take the O2 out of there and you can use it, etc. So my lungs don't do that at the proper capacity. So for example, I went walking in the fog. Bad move. If you have asthma, don't do that. That's stupid. <laughs> okay. You can do it for a little while, but what's, what you're going to end up happening, what happened to me was I had a small asthma attack. That damages my lungs every single time that happens. Every single time I get a cold, every single time I get the flu, and it's not even going to matter. I can walk outside and be high humidity. It damages my lungs in that way. Guess what? There's breathing exercises. So I can get that capacity back. So you just have to constantly do it. This idea that this thing is so major that we have to shut everything down is just crazy to me. And that's why there are people born with their ability to not do this and they can get their lung capacity back. That just said you can get your lung capacity back. Nothing in here except for the people who die. Okay, I'm not trying to downplay that, but I am trying to say that there's not going to be that many people who do die from it. And I am sorry that those people died. I'm not trying to be insensitive to that. But it just, it frustrates me to no end that everybody is so scared about something that given facts, okay, these are facts of this disease, does not qualify as this level of craziness. Okay. So let's go on. Okay, so just like the common cold, there's no cure for this thing. And they say here at Medical News Today, who so treatments include self-care and over-the-counter med medication. Basically, you can go and get a decongestant and be fine. People can take several steps, including resting and avoiding overexertion, <clears throat> drinking enough water, avoiding smoking in smoky areas, Huh. Sorry. Taking acetaminophen for pain and fever, using a clean humidifier or cool mist vaporizer. And so a doctor can diagnose the virus, etc. by using uh, your respiratory fluids. But this right here, avoiding smoking and smoky areas, taking acetaminophen, a clean humidifier, or cool mist vaporizer, this is everything you do for a cold or flu. And I'm just going to say again, this is everything you do for a cold or flu whenever you're self-medicating. This is These are things that I have done with this, all right, with a cold or flu. Most of the time, I don't even have to do that. I just lay in bed for two days, do the chicken soup, get up, go outside, sit in the sun while I wash my, my bedding, and then I'm good. I take a fourth day just in case, just to get my strength back up. And then by the fourth day, I'm back out doing whatever it is I need to do. And sometimes before then. <clears throat> so to me, this thing is just not that intense. And uh, again, I'm showing you that it's not just my opinion. These are the facts of this virus that you can find anywhere. 
but you're not seeing it in the media and you're not seeing it from our government. <sighs> and it just, it drives me crazy. And now they, now they're, you know, also telling us, or this is also starting, this is starting to actually circulate now, even though this actually happened in February. Okay. Let me show you this. Oh, there it goes. H5N1 bird flu has been reported in the China's Hunan province. So bird flu is back. <laughs> Guys, this is what, this is what drives me crazy about this. Okay. We are every year exposed to a new virus. That is a different strain of a virus. We already know that we have no cure for, and we have no fix for every single year, especially in China. And it, and it comes here. There, there's nothing out there that doesn't come here because we are a global uh, economy. Everything comes here. Everything goes, yeah, you know, we swap all the time because we're traveling to each other. So it is, it's just mind boggling to me why all this fear. So to close this, I'm going to just say this. I understand that part of the fear is the unknown factor, okay? But what I'm trying to say is we have unknown factors for every single new virus that we have every year. At least for two years now, the uh, flu virus that they've given you and the vaccine hasn't worked because it was the wrong one. All right. And part of it being the wrong one, one was new. They don't have it. You, you can't get it. The common cold, we don't have a cure for that. You just have to get it and get through it. That way your body can fight it off later. It not because, so this is the same. I'm just not understanding. This is the same stuff. All right. So maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you guys can leave me something in the comments to let me know, but this is the same kind of thing. And again, not without some proof, do I sit here and say this because as many articles are saying, you know, <clears throat> this is the death count. The death count still stays at 0.36. So to me, I'm looking at that going, okay, people, there is not an increase in death. More and more people are getting it and, and they're fine. They get up, they're fine. They're ready to go. They don't even have the lung damage that has that, that two to 3%, I'm going to call it. Okay. <clears throat> of people who get that once it's severe. So what is this panic about? All right. Other than the unknown factor which is, we don't know exactly how it's all going to play out, but as it's playing out, even in the, even where it's been, let's say the longest, the Wuhan area, there, there are 100 year olds with, you know, three different pre-existing conditions and they are fine. They are being treated with whatever it is they can, whatever it is they're treating them with, which nobody else, nobody's saying about that either, but <clears throat> they're surviving. They're going home and they're doing it without the lung damage. So some, I mean, what am I missing here? <laughs> Somebody please tell me why we're having to go through such panic for something that is so, to me, looks so normal. This is something we go through every year. Why are we panicking about this? Why are we sending our kids home when it doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even really, kids don't even really get it. It's really just the elderly who get it. And then the elderly with the pre-existing conditions can get it. It can be harder for them, but they're surviving. They're living. What is going on, guys? Come on. That, like, I would just like to ask that question. <laughs> and like I said, it's not with lack of um, facts. These are, these are facts also about this. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening to my rant and maybe you can show me something I haven't seen that says, you know, we're not going to get over this and um, we have to stay inside because if we do, we'll kill every single, you know, elderly person. And I'm not saying that it's, it's okay to go kill your grandmother or something, but I am saying that even if she does get this, she will live through it. I mean, I don't know. I would still go visit my grandmother. Maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> I don't know. You guys tell me. Uh, just maybe help me understand this a little bit. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.